Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Free Your Energy Podcast. I'm your host, best-selling author, Sylvester Magnet the Third. Let's start off with a guided meditation. A meditation around overthinking. Around overthinking because overthinking sucks. So first, I want you to gather your energy. Pull it all in. Pull it in. Breathe, 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 breathe. Breathe in, breathe out. Pull in all that energy. Center yourself. Here we go. I can be free from overthinking. I can be free from ruminating thoughts. I can be free from overthinking. I can be free from ruminating thoughts that cause me stress, anxiety, pain. I I can be free from these thoughts. I deserve to be in sync. I deserve to trust my intuition. I deserve to flow I deserve to not overthink I deserve to be in a plane of happiness I will not allow overthinking to control me anymore I will not allow overthinking to control me anymore I'm taking my power back. I'm taking control back. I am in control because I am okay with all outcomes. I see no need to overthink. Breathe in and I breathe out. (sighs) Breathe in and I breathe out. And doing this brings me calm. Breathing like this brings me joy. (sighs) Breathing like this allows me to relax. Breathing like this allows me to trust myself. I no longer have to deal with overthinking. My energy is free. My energy is free. This is the Free Your Energy Podcast. I'm your host, Sylvester McNutt III. Depending on where you are and where, where you came from, you might have just heard the guided meditation on overthinking. I strongly suggest you listen to the guided meditation on overthinking. Now I'm actually going to give you a couple of tips, strategies on how we can manage and how we can deal with overthinking. Overthinking is something that I wrote about in this book, Care Package, Path to Deep Healing. If you need to read my words and you want them with you. Maybe you guys on the podcast can hear this. You can, you can hear that. Uh, this book has 300 pages in it. Care Package of Path to Deep Healing. Here are the chapter titles. Alignment, walking away from pain, letting go, people pleasing and setting boundaries, guilt, codependency, self-care and putting yourself first, Overcoming anxiety, living in the moment, keep loving, and healing. I strongly recommend you guys read the Care Package book, A Path to Deep Healing. It can be found on uh, Amazon.com as well as SylvesterMcNutt.net. Now, you'll have to forgive me. My allergies are destroying me. Uh, Here in Arizona, the the weather is changing. And um, it's flat out destroying me, man. And I need to do some research. And I'm, I'm open to suggestions if you guys have any. Uh, 
I need to do some research on what chemicals or uh, herbal supplements or foods, you know, I need to start eating to help the allergies when this time of the time of the year comes around, when spring comes around. Because when I, every spring, I deal with this every spring, I feel like <laughs> I don't get sick. I just get like, uh, you know, if you have allergies, you know what I'm talking about. I just get like eyes red, runny nose. You know, I feel fine. I don't I don't feel sick, but the allergies just um to I mean they're just uncomfortable. Uh it's really not a big deal in the grand scheme of the world, but any person who deals with allergies knows, you know, if you could avoid it, you would prefer to. So I'm definitely gonna look into some allergy medicine or or uh like herbal supplements. So if you guys listen to the podcast or seen the videos, you guys know some tips. Uh, some strategies please send them my way or if for some reason there is like an allergy expert out there and you would like to be a guest on the podcast let's do that you know contact me let's get in touch uh if you're in arizona you can come on down and and, and, um we'll get you on if not call in before i talk about overthinking i actually want to just talk about the podcast uh, for a little bit. Launching this podcast has actually changed my life. It's been a phenomenal experience. It's helped me not only as a speaker, but as a writer because it's helped me prepare. It's helped me understand my material. It's helped me seek new information. And doing the podcast in the format that I've been doing it under has given me a sense of responsibility. It's also given me a sense of purpose. Now, I really want to just talk about the podcast and my podcasting experience and how it's been so far for me. This is going to be my, it looks like, 12th and 13th episode. I probably will break up the meditation as a little four or five minute episode. And then this would be, you know, the big episode. So this would be like episode 12 and 13. Uh, Started my podcast. It looks like my very first one was January 5th, 2019. A lot of people asked me uh, for the last two, three years, hey, man, when are you, when are you doing a podcast? When are you doing your podcast? We, we need you with us on the way to work. We need, like, I need you in my ear. You know, when are you, when are you doing a podcast? And, you know, it was never the right time. I remember talking about timing and alignment. That was the first episode was timing and alignment. And I remember just telling people how, you know, it wasn't the right time. It wasn't the right time. And I I do believe that timing matters. You know, you can have great intentions and you can have the right energy and you could be trying to make a change to your life or to another person or maybe you're trying to acquire a certain job or a certain skill, a certain trade. Maybe you're trying to plan a vacation or, you know, run your first marathon. And sometimes things just don't go your way. You know, they just don't flow the way <laughs> that you envisioned. And and that can be frustrating. But what we have to remember is that timing does matter. Just, just because something didn't work out for you, that doesn't necessarily mean it's not for you or it's not going to happen. It just, timing matters. You know, and timing is super important. So we just have to be mindful. And this was something I had to remind myself of. Timing matters when you're... When you're trying to be successful, when you're even with happiness, timing matters. I remember trying to get into colleges and the timing that I was applying was wrong at first because my, my grades that semester, my, my first, my uh, the first, what was it? It wasn't semesters in high school. It was uh, quarters. It was quarters in high school. So like my first quarter, my junior year wasn't that great. And I remember applying and they're just like, oh, no, nah. get out of here, bro. What are you doing? But then I had a, a second, and it wasn't great because I was playing football, so I was like, you know, distracted. But the second quarter of my junior year was phenomenal. It was great. And then I applied and I started getting better responses. And it wasn't because I wasn't worthy or I wasn't good enough. It was just simply because the timing, you know, it was just bad timing. So whatever you guys are trying to do in life, wherever you're trying to go, whatever you're trying to create, whoever you're trying to be, You'll get there. Uh, I just think you need to understand that timing matters. Timing is important. Timing has always been important. 
Timing will always be important. Uh, for me, timing this podcast to start the very first week of 2019 was great timing for me professionally. It's given me a lot of structure and it's given me a lot of, you know, something to look forward to. You know, I don't have kids yet, so I don't have that to look forward to. You know, like you guys get off of work and then, you know, your, your little girl or boy is waiting for you at the door. Mommy, daddy, you know, and I'm sure sometimes that's annoying for you, but I'm sure most of the time it's exciting and encouraging and inspiring. You know, I don't I don't really have that. I don't have that yet. I'm one of those adults who um, I wanted to figure out my career first. And that was that was my decision. I wanted to figure out my career and I also wanted to figure out myself before I had kids. I wanted to figure out what type of human being I was. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to deal with my hypocrisies, my insecurities, uh, my fears, uh, my doubts. I wanted to deal with that stuff, get that self-awareness and develop myself before I had children. That's the reason I haven't had kids. Not because my stuff doesn't work. My stuff works. <laughs> my stuff works. I, I just haven't had kids because I wanted to prioritize my career and myself. And I, I say that not in a selfish way because I, I do plan to and hope that I am able to have kids and start a family because, you know, I, I just I just want that's just something I want. Uh, but. The last couple of years have really been about me finding myself, finding my career, and figuring out how I could create a career that brought me happiness, that brought me joy, but one that also is going to give me the flexibility uh, to see my kids when I have them. And that's that's one reason I chose this career as a as a writer. Uh, that's one reason I wanted to do a podcast. That's one reason I I've, I've been doing public speaking for the last five years. Is it is tough. It is it is grueling. It is hard. But if you do it right, if you do it right, if you do this career right, and you time everything right, right? I'm I'm just like I'm flashing back to that first episode. This is like a nostalgia moment for me. I just feel like if you time everything right and you are in alignment, your life will work out the way it's supposed to. Um and I have to give myself some compassion because I think I I took an approach that uh, society may not have. I, I feel like okay, here's what here's how I feel. I feel like society has told us that there is a certain timeline uh, for certain activities. Now, from a biological perspective, let's be clear: there is a very particular timeline, especially in women, for when uh, it's healthier for a woman to have a pregnancy. We're not talking about the anomalies. We're, we're talking about what science has told us, right? That, let me actually, let me look this up real quick. Let's see if the internet gives us anything. I believe the term is fertility. Now, let's see. A woman's fertility peaks in the early and mid 20s which after it starts to decline slowly. While many sources suggest a more dramatic drop at around 35, this is unclear since studies are all cited from the 19th century and earlier. Wow, really? That's interesting. One 2004 study of European women found fertility of the 27 to 34 and the 35 to 39 groups had only a 4% difference. Wow, okay. At age 45, a woman starting to try to conceive will have no live birth in 50 to 80% of cases. Menopause or the cessation of menstrual periods generally occurs in the 40s and 50s and marks the cessation of fertility. Although age-related infertility can occur before then, the relationship between age and female fertility is sometimes referred to as a woman's biological clock. Wow, this is this is this is like 
I think that I think that little article I just read, I, I, that's from Wikipedia, so that's it's not anything scientific. I, I believe anybody can edit a Wikipedia. Uh, but in general, we could I mean we could all accept that. That's pretty that's pretty good information. I didn't I didn't um uh, I didn't really know any much about that. So the the term I was looking for is uh, fertility. So I understand that society has given us a timeline, you know, biologically based on the fertility of a woman, and I understand that. Right. But I don't personally let me let's look something else up. Hold on. Let's look something up. Let's look up because I don't know this. I'm trying to find out. Right. Free your energy is all about freeing your energy. One of the ways you free your energy is to say, hey, I don't know. So let me find out. So what I'm about to Google right now is um, do men do men ever become infertile? Infertile might be the wrong word, but no, it's actually the right word. You guys are learning with me. You guys are you guys are coming into my brain right now. All right. So this is from the uh, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, uh, the National Institute of Health. It says that these are how common how common is male infertility, and what are its causes. So I'm just going to kind of skim through this. This is actually, they have some um, sources here. There's seven different sources. Infertility is defined clinically in women and men who cannot achieve pregnancy after one year of having intercourse without using birth control. And in women who have two or more failed pregnancies. Studies suggest that after one year of having unprotected sex, 15% of couples are unable to conceive. And after two years, 10% of couples still have not had a successful pregnancy. In couples younger than age 33 who are generally healthy, 20% to 37% are able to conceive in the first three months. Many different medical conditions and other factors can contribute to fertility problems and an individual case may have a single cause, severe causes, or in some cases, no identifiable cause. Overall, one third of infertility cases are caused by male reproductive issues. Didn't know that. One third by female reproductive issues and one third by both male and female reproductive issues. Okay, I mean, so it's, it's balanced according to this. To conceive a child, a man's sperm. Hey, you guys that uh, didn't pay attention to health class, we're here today, all right? <laughs> okay. To conceive a child, a man's sperm must combine with a woman's egg. The testicles make and store sperm, which are ejaculated by the penis to deliver sperm to the female reproductive tract during sexual intercourse. So the next time one of your kids are like, hey, mommy, where did my where did my little brother come from? Read that sentence to conceive a child, a man sperm. <laughs> wow. That's so. OK. So all you people who have parents, I want you to message me and I want to know at what age do you have that talk? We refer to it as the birds and the bees. But like we all come from sex. So at what point do you guys in your parenting situations at what point have you guys said, you know what, I want to talk to my kids about sex? Do you do you wait till they're teenagers and they're curious about sex? Do you have that conversation maybe when they're around the age of 10? Uh, or even, I mean, do you have a really smart child and they understand things? So you, maybe you're talking to them around the age of 6? I don't know. I don't have kids. I'm asking you guys to write me, email me, DM me. I really, really genuinely want to know. And then the people who are listening who have kids who are grown kids, you know, um, 18, 19, 20 and up, I want to know how how you feel like the conversation went when you had it with them when they were younger and then how it impacted uh, their sexual experiences. And then, like, do you think they're a healthy adult uh, when it comes to sex and things of that nature? I would love to, I would love to hear from you guys. Like I say, contact me, email me. Uh, slymcnutt at gmail.com shoot me a DM on Twitter or Instagram Facebook wherever you are um, if you have my number just text me or call me like I would love to like just hear about your guys experience with that uh, so I'll just finish reading this there's only a paragraph left 
and then I'll finish what I was, what, you know, my thought I was thinking about. Other problems are hormone imbalances or blockages in the male reproductive organs in about 50% of the cases. The cause of male infertility uh, cannot be determined. A complete lack of sperm occurs in about 10 to 15% of men who are infertile. A hormone imbalance or blockage of sperm movement can cause a lack of sperm. In some cases of infertility, a man produces less sperm uh, than normal. The most common cause of this condition is called, wow, how do you pronounce that? Varicocele? It's spelled V-A-R-I-C-O-C-E-L-E. -E. I believe it's pronounced var, varicocele. Varicocele. Uh, in a large vein in the testicle, varicocele is present in about 40% of men with infertility problems. Wow. Whoa, this is... I didn't... Man, I didn't, I didn't realize. So, this kind of just changed my perspective because... And I know this is going to sound ignorant, but I think ignorance is the presence of, uh, you know, just not knowing. And I, I didn't know. I never knew till right now. I think my perception was always that, like, if there was, like, an infertility thing or, or a problem, it was more leaning towards, like, the woman. I thought, I thought the woman would have a higher rate. But reading this article from the uh, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, it's, it's actually showing me that, I feel like it's either more of a balance or that men are more, um, you know, deal with uh, infertility more. Now, I'm not, you know, I'm not a doctor. I'm not, don't listen to me. I'm just trying to explore. I'm trying to figure this out. So what I'll do, I'll copy this article and I will add it to the show notes. So if you guys want to just read it yourself, if you guys want to just, if you guys want to just read the article yourself, you can. Um, I will add it to the show notes. Wow, this is great. And then I'll also add the link that I had from, let's see if I can find that one. It was from Wikipedia. Yeah, okay. So that, that link is called Age and, um, Age and Female Fertility. This is very interesting. Okay, so I'll put those two links in the show notes. Uh, so if you're like, if you're on YouTube or iTunes or wherever you are, you can basically hit like show description and It'll show you the show notes or to show you what I wrote out. I'll, I'll be sure to add that because this will go up today. So I'll make sure that I get that added in there. So to finish my thought, and my thought has completely changed now that I read that. I mean, it's completely changed. Uh, I want to say this. Let me start over. I never personally have felt like or thought that I've had any personal problem with infertility. And that has never been my the deterrent that has delayed or um, caused me to extremely vet <laughs> for the building a kid process building a family what has i'm 33 years old i never ever tell you guys my age because you guys always think i'm like 22 how are you so you're so young and you know all this i don't well i'm 33 I, you know i'm an old man <laughs> uh but no so the reason that i've delayed is because like i say first i wanted to find myself I wanted to figure out how do I deal with the pain I was holding on to? How do I get rid of certain perceptions and perspectives I had of the world that I knew were not good enough to, in my opinion, create a healthy family? So, like, I had to I had to break up with that stuff first. Uh, and then second, like I say, I, I prioritized my career because I just saw so many people who struggle financially and. I didn't want to be fighting the battle of the like financial battle and fighting the I'm trying to find myself and I'm trying to raise a kid like I just like those are just a lot of battles and I wanted to put myself in my family position where the money wasn't uh, something that we have to stress about and then me finding myself or knowing who I am like I don't want to have I don't want to have a uh, you know a, mid, a midnight <laughs> midnight crisis. <laughs> A midnight crisis. That's what it's called from now on. The midlife crisis. That actually sounds like a uh, <laughs> like a Steven Spielberg book series. You are now reading The Midnight Crisis by Steven Spielberg. A little boy wanders out of his house at midnight <laughs> in the search of peanut butter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm having too much fun today. Let's 
And let me give you guys a clean transition. All right, let's end that topic. I just wanted to kind of rant and vent, kind of share what's on my mind. I'm glad I have the podcast. I'm glad it's giving me purpose. I'm glad that I found myself. <laughs> I'm glad that I have seven books. I'm glad that they've helped me find, my, find myself, helped me create a life for myself, helped me create a career that I love. And this podcast is going to be the, this is probably the first one I've ever talked about kids and family. So when you see I have one in like two years, <laughs> just remember this is where it came from because I'm trying to shift my gears now to, okay, guy, you're 33, you're in your career, it's going well, you've written enough books, like take a break from the books and and put some effort into uh, some other things. So that's where I'm at in my life, guys. And, and, and being here makes me happy. Uh, it makes me happy knowing that one day I'll, I'm hopefully, you know, hopefully I'll have kids and I'll be able to share things like with this, this podcast with them. And um, I'm just really grateful. I'm really, really grateful right now. I'm really grateful. I'm really happy. I'm really motivated. Uh, I'm really inspired. I'm just I just feel alive. And I hope you guys don't mind. Uh, I really went off script. This is just I just wanted to come from my head off the top of my head. I just wanted to give you give you some value man i just wanted to give you some real me give you some what's on my mind what's what's on my heart what i've been thinking but i didn't forget about the ways we can stop overthinking i know a lot of people struggle with this so i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell you something i struggle with this i struggle with overthinking i have no problem admitting that to you because i mean what are you gonna do beat me up <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> you're not you're not gonna fight me if anything you're gonna be like hey I struggle with it too like that's cool that you struggle with it uh I didn't always struggle with overthinking in fact uh I'm writing right now in the free your energy book I'm writing about I'm writing about overthinking and it's freeing me it, it, it's giving me so much freedom to just actually admit and say damn you know what I, I think I struggle with overthinking and I, I don't want to struggle with it the last two months I've been taking steps and trying different things, trying different tactics. And as of March 17th, 2000, and what year is this? 2019, I feel like I'm in a good spot and I feel like I have some control over it. When you guys read the Free Your Energy book that will come out this year, it'll be my eighth book. I'm really, really excited about it. When you read the chapter on, on overthinking, uh, I touched on it in Care Package, right? Uh, I introed it and unconsciously, I introed it because it was starting to kind of become a thing. I wasn't aware of it in the moment because it was never a thing for me. And I'm a here's the thing, I'm a very confident person. So I think the assumption is like confident people don't deal with something like that. And at least from my experience, that's not true. I mean, that's not true. I'm a very, very confident person, but I've been struggling with overthinking. So I'm like, well, damn, like, how do I get out of it? So I got some tips for you today. I'm gonna give you a couple of tips. All the real tips, I'm telling you, is gonna be in the Free Your Energy book. When that book comes out, you gotta order it, you gotta read it, it'll be soon. I promise you, just bear with me. But in the meantime, since I can't give you the book right now, you're here, I'm gonna give you some, some words to give you some encouragement. So, here's five things that you can do, or five things that you need to be aware of to stop overthinking, all right? The very first thing is you have to have self-awareness to Get over the overthinking. You have to have self-awareness and you have to be able to ask yourself, why am I overthinking? And you, you have to start with the why. Why am I uh, overthinking? Let me address this, right? Let me address that I'm overthinking. Why is it? And then when you ask yourself that question, you're going to go down a rabbit hole. Maybe it's fear. Fear of what? Fear of loss. Fear of judge. Uh, confusion. There's going to be reasons why you're overthinking. So the first step is just to ask, okay, why? What's causing it, right? Then the second thing I want you to do around overthinking is do not think of the worst case scenario. Do not think in a pessimistic way. Because if you're 
having ruminating thoughts, you're thinking, 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 and you're not concluding. You're not saying, okay, this is what's gonna happen. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. Okay, this is the action I'm gonna take. When you're overthinking, you're just thinking, 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 and it becomes obsessive and it starts to hurt your brain. So what you have to tell yourself is, I'm not gonna have pessimistic thoughts because those negative thoughts are not going to conclude the overthinking. In fact, they're probably going to prolong the cycle and I'm ready to stop the cycle, right? On top of that, number three, the third step for uh, pausing the overthinking is keep the word perspective at the front of your mind, all right? Perspective. Your perspective is how you see things, right? It's how you hear things. It's the stories you tell yourself. It's the way you allow yourself to feel. It's the belief system you have. That is all your perspective of life. So if you find yourself overthinking, having stress, having, you know, creating this anxiety, creating this worry, what you have to understand is that there is a certain perspective that you can introduce. Use the word calm. You can introduce a calming perspective and you can say, hey, I have this problem, I have this struggle, but I'm going to remain calm. And if you take a calmer approach, the calmer approach from my experience is going to empower me and it may empower you to take an approach that's going to actually allow you to get a conclusion. That, that's going to allow you to stop overthinking. Now, the fourth step around overthinking, and if you, so I know why I struggle with overthinking. The reason I struggle with overthinking is because I'm a content creator. Uh, I'm a business owner, and I live solely off of my efforts and off of my words, off of my works, off of the people I know, off of the people I meet, off of the shows I do. I live off of the podcasts I do. I live off of my books. And there is no guarantee that you will continue listening to me. There's no guarantee that you will ever pay me. Like, if you never buy a book and you benefit off of my efforts, then great. But 99% of what I do is free. Like, I'm banking on the 1%. I'm banking that you may come hear me speak. I'm banking on that uh, you may buy a book for me. Like, that's it. That's all I sell. Now, now, people could say, oh, well, you know, you should have all this merch and that merch and I mean, they might, they may be right. You should do commercials for your podcast. I don't want to do commercials for my podcast. I don't, I don't want to do commercials. I don't know. It just, I don't know that for me, that, that feels corny. Like the podcast for me is a safe space. I can come and speak and just share what's on my mind, share what's on my heart. I can connect with my readers, my audience. I can help you. It can help me. Why would I want to put a, some bullshit corporate commercial on my podcast? I don't know. I know people do it because they get the funding. How about this? How about I will keep my podcast uh, commercial free. And if you guys want to contribute and donate, I will accept donations. You know, it costs me about 60 bucks to, for each podcast episode because I come to a studio. Um, and then the time I spend editing and posting is probably about six hours. If my time is worth, let's just say, 30 bucks an hour. I'm horrible at math. You do the math. I mean, that's probably how much money I would like to make off each episode if I was coming into it with that perspective. So I'll do this. If you guys would like to donate to keep me running and keep my podcast running, I have no problem with that. You go to my website, SylvesterMcNutt.net. I'll put a link up there. It'll just say donate. It'll be a donate tab. If you want to donate, donate. If you don't give a damn about donating, Guess what? I'm going to still drop a new episode every week because this is what I'm passionate about. This is what I love doing. And, uh, you know, I can't predict the future. And that's the point that I wanted to tell you. You can't predict the future, right? You can't predict the future. So me as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, I would love to predict the future and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to make $5.5 million so I don't have nothing to worry about. Don't you wish you could do that at your job? Don't you wish you could just say, hey, I'm going to have this job for the next 20 years. Like, I'm going to have money. I'm going to be able to take care of my family. It's going to be all good. Like, you wish you could say that just like I wish I could say that. But neither one of us can. And that's okay. And that's the step of overthinking that we have to realize is that we cannot control the future. The only thing we can control is the efforts that we put in today. That's it. So you're overthinking because you're trying to control outcomes. You're, you're trying to control the future. 
And in order for you to stop overthinking, you have to understand, you, you're not Will Smith. You're not the genie. Like, you can't predict the future. The only thing you have is today. So just commit to doing the best today. Commit to having the best energy that you can today. Commit to, to trusting yourself in the moment, to surrounding yourself with good people. That's all we can do. We cannot control the future. We can only control the efforts we make today. And if you do your best, you'll, you'll have closure and peace with the outcomes. I promise you. And, and that's what I tell myself every day. Do your best and you'll have closure and you'll have peace with the outcome. My very last tip, the fifth tip on overthinking, on, on happiness, letting go of the ruminating thoughts is to be grateful. To be grateful. To live in a space of gratitude. Allow yourself to say, wow, I'm happy that I am on my 12th or 13th podcast episode. I'm happy that I was able to put on a clean shirt this morning. I'm happy that even though I have allergies, I have tissue, <laughs> tissue that can help me. Even though I have problems in my life, I'm happy for the blessings I have. Even though I have confusion in my life, I am happy for what I understand. Even though there's some hate in my life, I'm happy for all the love I have. When you allow yourself to be grateful, overthinking goes away. Anxiety goes away. Depression peels back off of you. We just have to remember every day, what am I grateful for? What, what, what two things can I be grateful for? Who can I be grateful for? Because when you live in a space of gratitude, and when you live in happiness, you create a culture of gratitude and happiness. And that's honestly what I'm trying to do personally. And I hope you're trying to do that as well. Live in a culture of happiness. Live in a culture of, of I'm grateful for being where I am in life. I'm grateful for what I've learned. I'm grateful for my connections. I want to thank you for listening to this podcast. If you are following on YouTube, or, or wherever, Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, Free Your Energy Goes Live. I'm so grateful for you. I'm grateful that you're here. I'm grateful that you are giving me a chance to speak to you, to talk to you. I'm grateful that you are willing to learn and grow with me. I'm grateful that you allow me to have this safe space where I can just speak and, and share my ideas and thoughts. And you may be judging me, and that's okay. Uh, I'm, not, I, I, I'm not here to, uh, I guess care so much about that i'm i'm here to care that i explore thoughts that i explore ideas that when i don't know things i look them up i share information with you i'm here to share good energy with you i'm here to just expand not only my brain but yours and i'm grateful for the podcast platform because i would love to speak in front of everyone all the time but you know that's unrealistic i can't travel to every city all the time and with the podcast with the video you know, we can be together and we can share some good energy together. So I'm grateful. I think. No, I don't think I'm not overthinking. I know. I know that this is one of my best episodes. And that's all I try to do every week is make sure I give you one of my best episodes. And this feels like one of my best. With that being said, all I want you to do this week is free your energy. Free your energy.